So as we do welcome our dear friend, a Catholic minister and now retired Darcy Davis Beejan from Arizona tonight as uh, the sun shines upon her as she shares her light and sunshine upon us tonight. Catholic minister, teacher, musician and life coach combining her studies of world philosophies, Catholic training and practices of mind, body, spirit connection. Darcy teaches the invisible side of success and alignment with the universal laws. For over 30 years of her life, she has worked as a teacher, speaker, workshop leader, singer, and as I mentioned, she is enjoying retirement now. She mostly recently taught music choir and uh, musical theater to third through eighth graders in the Goodyear, Arizona area and that, uh, that part of the country. Whether teaching or coaching, she empowers others to manifest their dreams through transformative thinking and decisive action. Darcy's experiential fun teaching style invites people to ignite their passion, their power, and purposeful living, and she'll do it again tonight as she has in previous Sunday nights with us. Her topic tonight, discovering the gifts of adversity, should be a good one. Thank you, Nancy, and thank you, Michael. It's wonderful to be with you this evening. Welcome home to the house of your heart. Welcome home, welcome home, where miracles happen and dreams come true. Love and hopes and joys are renewed. It's a place that you can call home. I wrote that song several years ago and it has served as a guidepost for me on many occasions. Forgiveness is the work of heart. Let me invite you now into the house of your heart and hear these words from that place, that perspective. For in the house of your heart, love envelops your ego and begins to wash away the pain of your past. Love understands that your ego is merely an embryonic soul growing and learning. It is divine knowing. Love smooths the rough edges and guides you on the path of healing and grace. Love facilitates the journey of forgiveness. And so we begin. Forgiveness is a broad topic and one that can be approached from many different angles. It is safe to say that all of you who are here are on some kind of a spiritual journey. I would guess you have had your own successes and challenges with forgiveness. Forgiveness may mean different things to different people, especially when seen through the lens of a particular religion, ideology, or philosophy. In general terms, we look at forgiveness as a process or actions taken to pardon another or a circumstance in which we felt hurt, mistreated, abused, or victimized. Growing up in a Christian and metaphysical household, I was taught to forgive others because it was the right thing to do. It was what good people did. I wasn't taught much beyond the expectations that you forgive because Jesus and God forgive you. As a child, I thought I owed people in my family forgiveness because that's what Jesus did for me. So throughout my childhood into young adulthood, I forgave the surface wrongs in an attempt to look obedient and follow the rules, but I lacked a deeper understanding of forgiveness as a practice. From a young age, I was focused on leading a spiritual path. Unconditional love was part of that path, so forgiveness definitely needed to be a priority. The deeply troubling things that happened to me along life's path, I didn't really forgive as much as ignore or deny that they even happened. Instead of holding unforgiveness against anyone who mistreated me, I would shift the blame and judgment onto myself often harboring feelings of self-loathing and self-condemnation. My incomplete understanding of karma made me take the blame for anything negative that happened to me, thinking it was something I did, said, or perhaps orchestrated in a past life that made challenges play out in this life. 
At times, I thought these were lessons I chose to learn or karmic debts I had to pay. I thought it was my fault that I had no one to blame but myself. I look back now and I see I only had a partial understanding about forgiveness and not necessarily a healthy one at that. Wow. <laughs> okay, this was my base point and that is a lot to unpack. Perhaps you too can relate to some of the confusing web of ideas that my ego wove around forgiveness. At some crossroads, when the burden of my self-hatred became too heavy, I decided I must choose a path of healing. Eventually, when I had my own children, they were my reason. I did not want to unconsciously pass behaviors and ideas onto them. I realized that part of my healing involved the study, practice, and better understanding of the role forgiveness played in my life. And I came across this wonderful poem by Mary Oliver called The Journey, and it kind of encapsulates where I was at that time. One day you finally knew what you had to do and began, though the voices around you kept shouting their bad advice, though the whole house began to tremble and you felt the old tug at your ankles. Mend my life, each voice cried, but you didn't stop. You knew what you had to do. Though the wind pried with its stiff fingers at the very foundations, though their melancholy was terrible, it was already late enough and a wild night and the road full of fallen branches and stones. But little by little, as you left their voices behind, the stars began to burn through the sheets of clouds. And there was a new voice which you slowly recognized as your own that kept you company as you strode deeper and deeper into the world, determined to do the only thing you could do, determined to save the only life you could save. I knew I must forge a deeper understanding of forgiveness towards others and for myself. I have come to learn that forgiveness is one of the most loving acts one can give. Forgive. Forever giving. What could be more loving than that? Indian master Punja says, love is always loving us. So put your hand on your heart and ask yourself silently, what if I was always loving me? Let that land for a second. That is what soul is calling us to do. And what does unforgiveness deny? Unforgiveness denies the feeling of letting love in to know each and every one of us is love. So consider this story. Forgiveness is good for our soul. A teacher once told each of her students to bring a clear plastic bag and a sack of potatoes to school. For every person they refused to forgive in their life's experience, they chose a potato and wrote on it the name of the person they were not forgiving and the date and put it in the plastic bag. Some of the bags were quite heavy. They were then told to carry this bag with them wherever they went for a week, putting it in their beds at night, on the car seat when they were driving, next to their desks at work. The hassle, of lugging this around with them made it clear what a weight they were carrying spiritually and physically and how they had to pay attention to it all the time to not forget it, leaving it in embarrassing places. 
Naturally, the condition of the potatoes deteriorated to a nasty smelling slime. This was a great metaphor for the price we pay for keeping our pain and heavy negativity. Too often we think of forgiveness as a gift to the other person and clearly it is the gift we give ourselves. We've probably heard stories like that before and we can appreciate the weight of the metaphorical words. Intellectually, we can understand that consequences might come from not forgiving others. How holding grudges and hurt feelings only end up disturbing our peace of mind and heart, as well as physical, and usually go completely unnoticed by the person who hurt us. But what about the gifts we receive? that come from adversity. After all, what is the purpose of adversity in our lives? There was a time when I thought adversity was the enemy. When adversity showed up, my, up in my life, I thought clearly I was doing something wrong. I've matured in my thinking in and around adversity. I don't consciously invite it into my life, but I've learned to temper my attitude towards it. I've come to accept that some things do not go as I have planned. Accepting the possibility of some adversity in my life takes a little bit of the sting out of it when it shows up. When I was younger, my ego was a bit of a perfectionist. Anybody can relate to that? <laughs> so anything characterized as adverse made me feel like a giant spotlight was showcasing my many imperfections. I tried denying that adversity was part of this earthly experience. I tried looking past it, pretending it didn't affect me thinking if I ignored it, I didn't, it didn't really exist, and I would slide through unscathed. I didn't really understand the concept of denial back then. I didn't realize the idea was to deny the power that a person or circumstance had over me. I just wanted to shortcut the pain by denying so that the hurt can just be all over. That only served to bring about devastating results once the mounting pile of denial grew and became so unmanageable that I finally had to face what really had happened to me in my life. Once I realized that adversity was part of the soul's expansion and evolution, I began to see that my life could change when looking through the eyes of the soul. The ego is incapable of embracing the gifts of adversity, but the soul not only embraces them as gifts, but understands the nature of adversity and the role that it plays in our soul's journey. When we allow ourselves to see adversity with soul eyes and accept that trials and tribulations are here to bring us closer to home, we can better align with the mystery and grace of the universe. In short, when we allow, accept, and align with the light of our souls, then we shift into the knowing that every circumstance is here to help us. Therein lie the gifts of adversity. Three A's, allow, accept, align. I want to share 
a beautiful a beautiful blessing that's really more like a poem from John O'Donohue in his book, To Bless the Space Between Us. Entitled, For Someone Who Did You Wrong. Though it's ways to strike in a dumb rhythm, stroke upon stroke as though the heart were an anvil, the hurt you sent had a mind of its own. Something in you knew exactly how to shape it, to hit the target, slipping into the heart through some wound window left open since childhood. While it struck outside, it burrowed inside, made tunnels through every ground of confidence. For days it would lie still until a thought would start it. Meanwhile, you forgot, went on with things and never even knew how that perfect shape of hurt still continued to work. Now, a new kindness seems to have entered time and I can see how that hurt has schooled my heart in a compassion I would otherwise have never learned. Somehow now, I have begun to glimpse the unexpected fruit your dark gift had planted. And I thank you for your unknown work. There's something about that poem that just captured this lesson for me. I'm not saying it's easy to forgive, but I'm going to tell you it will be worth it. <laughs> I'm not privy to the wounds each of you carry. I'm not presumptuous enough to think I know what's on your heart or how you view forgiveness. But I am saying, even if you are not ready to forgive someone or something, Consider being willing to entertain the idea of forgiveness. I have found that even when I am not ready to forgive a grievance, I can simply state with my hand on my heart, it is my intention to forgive this hurt. That opens my heart just enough to start the process. So give yourself the time you need, but for the sake of self-compassion, allow yourself the willingness to forgive. You may be surprised to see what or who shows up to assist you in the process. For me, some of the most painful events in my life contained a gift that took me many years to unwrap. Years ago, my Coptic mentor, John Davis, talked about one of the most painful things to overcome in life was when your John became your Judas. In other words, when your beloved became your betrayer. That became true for me when my first husband left me and our marriage ended in divorce. Adversity was not only pounding down my door, it was moving in and taking up residence. This was one of the most devastating times in my life. My heart broke open widely. My soul was being called to expand and my ego wanted to crawl in a hole and die. My soul went out though, and expand I did. I grew in more ways than I can count, but the growth I gained in the practice of forgiveness continues to serve me today more than 30 years later. More than anything at the time, I wanted to forgive my former husband. I believe that if I could continue to peel back the layers of unforgiveness, I could get closer 
to arriving at true forgiveness and be done with that chapter of my life. I could move on with no wounded heartstrings attached. I prayed often for more to be revealed, begging to see the things differently from a higher perspective that would provide closure and healing. I tried visualizing my former husband as a child, imagining how his heart had been wounded when he was young. Seeing him like this opened my heart to more compassion, knowing that some of his early story certainly had played out in our married life. And then I realized that we both brought unresolved childhood baggage into our relationship and reflecting on the fact that we both contributed to the demise of our relationship and reflecting on the fact that we both had a hand in the ending of our marriage helped me to peel back those layers of unforgiveness, healing them with the light of truth. The truth I was that I too was unskilled in how I handled things in our relationship. Admitting this to myself, taking responsibility for my part helped me heal more deeply another gift from compassionate forgiveness. I thought back to John's words from earlier, knowing that my former husband had been my beloved, who I felt betrayed me. I came across a quote from one of my favorite poets, the Persian Rumi. It goes like this. Out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. When the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about. Ideas, language, even the phrase each other doesn't make any sense. As I reflected on those words, an idea started to marinate in my heart. I began to see both my former husband and me as part of the same soul family. In that field of which Rumi wrote, I saw myself standing with my soul family. I was getting ready to incarnate, explaining the lessons and life I was hoping to create. And there, in the level of soul, my former husband said, yes. I'll play that part for you. I will help you with that lesson because I love you. That was the gift that broke my heart wide open with forgiveness for him, for me, for us both. The painful event of betrayal and divorce became transformed into the most precious gift, the pearl of great price given in love. I believe that this scenario is true on the soul level, and I have never looked at the practice of forgiveness the same way since. The gift from this story kept giving as I healed in that part of my life. Six years later, I was reunited with my high school sweetheart, who's been my husband now for over 22 years. Because of this healing, I utilize this awareness and perspective in my approach to the all forgiveness opportunities. I expect there is a gift. I look for it. I prefer to live from the house of my heart, and I accept the work that needs to be done to <clears throat> be on the part that fulfills the evolution of my soul. I choose to learn from love, a shift that has made all the difference in my forgiveness practice and process. Your gifts are ready for you to claim and unwrap. Your gifts have bared witness to your struggles, your heartache, and your psychic wounds. Your gifts are waiting for you to choose love 
over pain, love over fear. Jesus reminds us in Luke 12, 32, it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So, welcome home to the house of your heart. Welcome home, welcome home, where peace can be found and faith will abide. Open yourself to what's waiting inside. It's a place that you can call home. Forgiveness brings you home. Thank you. Bravo, Darcy. Thank you. Much peace to you. Allow, accept, and what was the, the AAA? Um, allow, accept, and align. Align. Okay. Align with your soul. That was powerful. And op opening your heart to talk about your, your former husband. Um, yeah, I've been through divorce myself, and it's not fun. Uh, John actually called it a, a crucifixion when, when, when I went through it, and it's, it's hard <laughs> It's a lot of forgiveness and a lot of work through. So I, I appreciate you sharing and opening your heart to share your experience. Blessings, everyone. If you have any other questions and comments of Darcy's heartfelt, loving talk, uh, please share. What were the three again, Darcy? Um, <clears throat> allow, 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 accept, and, al and align. Allow, accept, and align. Yeah, thank you. I kind of like the whole alliteration thing. <laughs> it makes it yeah. easy to remember stuff. <laughs> I love your song, Darcy. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll be singing that at the, the Elevate Conference or in the Epicenter at one point. That was nice. Thank you. Thank you, Darcy. That was really great. I oh, really welcome. Yeah, You're beautiful. welcome, Lori. I had to see where the voice was <laughs> coming from. I recognized your voice. I didn't, couldn't find your picture right away. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? You sure Hi. may. Um, Hi, yes, I, Leanne. Hi, Darcy. I was wondering when you realized your soul family, like, okay, this is part of my, my own contract I've made here. Um, I, I guess I played with that idea off and on. Um, throughout my spiritual path. And to me, it just makes sense that we tend to incarnate with our family. Um, you know, the Coptic family is part of my soul family. I know we have, we've all probably played different parts for each other at different times in our evolution. And um, when I started thinking about that, I thought, because I, I, personal, I personally believe that Judas also said to Jesus, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, okay. And when I started thinking about that, I thought, what if I had this idea that I needed to grow in this way? And Craig said, I'll do it. And so I started, you know, playing with that idea and meditating on that. And it just made sense to me. And I could tell by how, like I said, how my heart just opened up to that idea that it was because he loved me so much <laughs> that he was willing to step into that role that at the time devastated me i'm sure it helped soften yeah yes yes and you know what i i decided a long time ago it may not even be true but <laughs> if i you know if it if it helps me with my because someday i'll someday i'll die and i'll figure it out right I'll, I'll hear how it goes but it just made so much sense to me it just hit hit home kind of like a, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think we'll go with that. And the fact that the gift of being able to fully release and let go of the hurt of that relationship, the ending of that relationship, I should say, um, made it, just made, made it all, all the, all the more, 
um, plausible to me that that was that was true for us. That that made sense. So do you think the gift of the learning was necessary? That's a great question. Yeah, but um, I, th I think yeah. from the understanding of where I was at the time I maybe made that soul contract or, um, you know, I think sometimes I think, you know, oh, it, it always sounds better when you're in soul because you don't have the, uh, um, the personality and the attachment to the feelings and the emotions that go along. Hey, this sounds like a great idea, let's do this. And then you get down here and you're like, oh, what was I thinking? <laughs> that, wasn't, that wasn't my best idea. Um, that really hurt, you know? So, mm -hmm. thank you. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes, it does. Thank you very much, Tracy. You're welcome. <laughs> I want to say that um, my sister had a similar experience. Um, she had gone through a really difficult relationship and the uh, man she was engaged to had been an alcoholic. He was recovering alcoholic when they were dating. But when she went away to a dance competition, he started drinking and he turned into a whole different person and he destroyed her property and stole things and then he started making threats and becoming really very, she had to leave, she had to move, she had to go, she moved in with me, she left, she was living in New Jersey at the time, and before she came to my house, she went to my sister's in California, and then came to my house, and this man started phoning my house every day, making slurs against her, and it was a terrible time, it was really difficult, but he, he had a heart attack and died, mm. and she said, you know, he died of a broken heart. And she said, rather than being really angry at him, she realized that this whole process had made her realize that all of her possessions weren't important. She had to, she lost a whole lot of stuff, things, material things. But she gained her ability to be independent and strong and her being able to leave that situation and build a new life in a new, new situation. And she said, you know, the world is a stage and he was playing his role in it. She said, I think that it made me stronger. It made his, his ex-wife and his children because they were really angry at him too. Um, there were other people that were hurt by what he was doing. And she said, he, he did a really good job of playing the role that he came here to play. And I thought, wow, I would never have looked at it like that. So you're saying the same thing. But you're not saying your husband died, but this man did die. I mean, it was scary until he died, actually. I, I, I felt a little... He, he at one time drove from New Jersey to my house in Ohio and... My mom and my another sister were, uh, the, well, my mom and my sister who was living with me, the one that he he'd broken up with, um, they went to visit another sister who lived in Columbus at the time, and they didn't return because I had gotten the flu or something, and it turned out that he had actually driven to my house and was sitting on a corner waiting for them to return. He saw them leave. He was waiting for them to return and they didn't come back that evening. And so he ended up leaving. So we were always, I was always, we didn't know it at the, at that time, but it was, he left this message on a recording to somebody else. And the whole situation was really weird, but it did. It changed the way I looked at things as well as the way she looked at things. It changed the way other friends that she knew looked at things. So we do live in a strange world. We are all actors on the stage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I like the idea that you could accept and release it. Like you said, that carrying that bag with you. Yeah, once you could release it, that opened you to find new love. 
And my sister also found new love and she's back with a fellow that she dated when she was in college. <laughs> and they're married now and very happy. In fact, this weekend's their anniversary. <laughs> Good. Well, and I do believe that Jim, had I not done the work, Jim would not have come back into my life, yeah. at least at that time. I don't think that would have happened. But he was living in Seattle and I was in Michigan. And so, you know, when <laughs> when you've done the work, then new gifts arrive, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do, I truly do believe that there's always a gift, particularly whenever love is involved, there's always a gift there for you. And um, I don't know, some people would probably tell me that, you know, that's pretty naive to think in those terms. But um, I do know that when you can look through soul eyes and you can look through the eyes of love, you see things differently. You see things in a way that will help you traverse those adversarial moments and times in your life. At least I can say that for myself. And I'm sure that you went within and followed your inner guidance to Absolutely. get to that point. I did, yes. Yeah. So I, th I think that the, the lessons learned in this Coptic fellowship yes. are really helpful. You ever ask yourself, though, why did I sign up for this? <laughs> oh, heavens, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Many times I've asked me, not only in that situation, but in other situations, oh my gosh, what were you mm -hmm. thinking? <laughs> you know, and, and I, I, did, I did get to the point where I kept on affirming that I, okay, universe, I know I no longer want to learn through pain. I really would like to sign up for the learn through love track. And can we just kind of shift things <laughs> into a different way to learn? And um, that really has helped open my eyes to see things a lot differently as well. You know, it's, it's amazing. You know, you, you ask, you ask, and you receive. You really do. It um, may not always come in the form that you thought it was going to show up in, but um, I'm doing a lot of asking these days and noticing how quickly Oh my gosh, and there it is. <laughs> Look at how quickly that came. And um, it's because of, you know, putting love first, Le you know, letting love lead. When love leads the way, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. And a lot, a lot of, you know, self-forgiveness too. <laughs> Leanne came along with that <sighs> because I always wanted to kind of beat myself up about, you know, decisions or choices made or paths taken and I just decided it's all part of the whole it's all all part of the journey home so um all part of the plan it is it wasn't it wasn't a bad or wrong I wasn't bad or wrong that was what I chose to do and look at how it worked out and focus on focusing on how it worked out instead of <laughs> Focusing on how, oh, oh that, you know, that wasn't my best moment. Okay. <laughs> but through it, you have not only grown, but you're helping the rest of us. Oh, thank you. That is, that is a true compliment. Thank you for that. And I want to thank you for your song. When you start singing it, I thought that sounds familiar. And it's like <laughs> that I got from you. Thank yes. you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Your music is lovely. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you. That wonderful presentation. This, it was a phenomenal presentation. You, you Thank had, you, John. You had so many levels of consciousness, so many ideas, so many things that we can learn from. Just absolutely magnificent. We're so honored to have you in this organization. Thank you so much for your kind words, my mentor, <laughs> my mentor and teacher. <laughs> Great presentation, Darcy. I got one question for you. Yes. Where did you, you get the Buddha? Buddha. 
Oh, <laughs> that's a great question. I don't know. I think I may have gotten it like at Goodwill years ago or something like that. <laughs> isn't, isn't he fun? <laughs> My joyful Buddha back there. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he's referring to. <laughs> Beautiful, Darcy. Thank you very much for your presentation of uh, love and new awareness too. The stuff to think about. I do appreciate it very much. One thing uh, I like to say: my mother really loved your singing when she was with us, and uh, 